This is the Aeon Byte interview, and with us today we have Winter Lake to discuss his new book, The Satanic Paradigm. How are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? Oh, just wonderful. Thanks a lot for joining the show. Um, you mentioned that your book is for someone versed in Satanism, that somebody should already have a working knowledge of Satanism before opening your book. So before we delve into the satanic paradigm, could you give us a history of modern Satanism? Modern Satanism has come about since about 1959. It started with uh, Anton van der LeVay and his magic circle, and uh, it was focused mainly on witchcraft soirees and series of other type of rituals that they were experimenting with. And from the magic circle, it evolved in coming up to about 1966 into the formal Church of Satan. From that point on uh, 1966, on Walpurgis Knot, which is April 30th of just about every year, and Walpurgis Knot means Witch's Night in German, Anton van der Lebe, uh began his religion, his Church of Satan. And it is still a functioning religion as of uh, 2010. It's had a very long and arduous history with its ups and downs, and modern Satanism has obviously evolved from that point until now into kind of just a plethora of different paths, um, Luciferianism, theistic Satanism, self-indulgent Satanism. So it, it's many, many branches of the tree have grown. And uh, which one do you subscribe to or lean towards? Satanism, for me, is kind of like take what you can and discard the rest. You know, I take from a lot of different philosophies over the past, like, 500 years intrinsically on Satanism and in, in encompassing even the modern concepts of Satanism. So it's it's like I will borrow me personally from these variating different concepts and build my own precept of what Satanism is for me. I never really aspire to one set design on what Satanism is. I always aspire to be many, many different aspects. And uh, even ironically, I am a member of the Church of Satan. Although currently I am exploring, you know, in, in involvement with many, many other different types of sets. And what exactly attracted you to Satanism versus other occult paths? When I was about five years old, I experienced a series of supernatural occurrences and omens. To speak of this, and people would be like scratching their heads and thinking, this guy's crazy. But really, they did occur for me personally. Uh, I had that fly in my room when I was a child, and I had kept it hidden in my closet. And I had always leaned towards darker elemental experiences of storms and visceral other entities of dead trees and so on and so on. And, and I felt communications with other entities. And so that was what really my natural attraction to it was was kind of like the borderline between where reality ends and where the supernatural begins. And it's been with me since I was a child. From my teenage years, I came in contact with Anton van der LeVay through letters. And uh, later on, I learned about the 888 celebration, which Zena LeVay, which, who was at that time in 1988, the uh, high priestess of the Church of Satan had invited me out to the 888 celebration in San Francisco, which I attended, and met a lot of interesting individuals, Boyd Rice and people that were there. And there was a lot going on, and it was it was a really fun place to be at that time. And things were really galvanized. And unknown to a lot of people, there was a deeper precept behind the 888 celebration, other than just a big party with a lot of lab tech films and recitals and rituals and so on. It, it really had to do with the 1988 year itself being 1,500 years predicted in the Bible and other 
uh, Gnostic texts of the overturning of the world's holy righteousness or holy politicians and just other kind of morass of individuals to Lucifer's thrall in a sense in 1988. And this has been very substantiated by what exactly that 1,500 year mark, which ended in, in 1988, was when Satan himself as an entity of Luciferian power uh, became the ruler in the stead of, of the rulers. Very interesting. Is Satan a Christian or a pre-Christian figure? Satan is as old as the world. The entity of Satan stems from Pazuzu being one of the oldest forms of demonic power on the earth. Aram and Lilith, these creatures came from the deserts of Persia and Iraq and so on, where they basically the foundation of the world existed. Anton van der Leve spoke of this area being the seven powers of Satan, which makes a lot of sense. And, and I think that it is very pre-Christian. During the medieval ages, it was more codified that Satan was an entity and the Crusades began and a series of events occurred that was a, a major backlash against any kind of experimentation in the occult in general. And I think it just got branded as the like, when really it was an evolution of mankind. It had to do with witchcraft. It had to do with the experimentation into other realities and astral things and, and occurrences of visions that people were having that may or may not have been substantiated as so-called satanic forces when really they had to do with the mind or the experience, the evolution of humanity on a whole. As Christianity felt threatened by this, they began to soar against it, and they really carried that to the hilt through crusading, through the burnings, uh, false accusations. Generally, this had to do with jealousy. It had to do with their position in the world being threatened by alternate ways of thinking, in my opinion. Yeah, because in ancient times, uh, you know, like for example, in Judaism, Satan is, isn't is seen, he's a seems to be a much different character. He seems to be God's accuser, God's executioner, if you would. And the darker gods in ancient times were simply part of the whole cosmic energy, weren't they? Absolutely. You cannot have light without the dark, and it's a very cliche thing to say, but it's very relevant. The god Pan, stemming from that concept, of, you know, the god Loki, were very ambiguous figures that encompass both good and evil. They were trickery and so on. These are basic elements of how humanity is, how humans are in general. They all have this sort of Loki or Pan within them, you know, they have a Hecate, they have a nature about them that is both of the light and the dark. And is it is it benevolent or is it really natural? I mean, who is to say? We know that it exists in humans, that this ambiguous nature exists. In, in, in certain extreme religions, like Muslimism, they totally want to slash it out. But really, they're slashing out a very ele elemental aspect about themselves. Muslimism, and not to diverge too much, really is, is kind of a very extremist concept that they have to live on this earth in the spiritual sense of this good and evil, which they attain or aspire to be non-physical and non-indulgent. Yet when they die according to the Quran, they are able to establish themselves lustfully through the sexual relations with up to 90 virgin women. That in itself is a contradiction to the, to the world as a whole, that you would aspire to a spiritual sexual experience when you die, yet while you're alive, when you're in a physical form, you cannot. So they have a totally twisted view of how that light and dark work together. 